Ladies and gentlemen, unless you live under a rock, you've probably already seen Shams report that Luka Doncic is likely to miss game one of the series against the Utah Jazz. But I'm here today to tell you, I'm not giving up faith. I'm not giving up hope. Not until I see Luka Doncic in an ugly-ass Jordan jumpsuit on the sideline am I giving up hope. Okay, and today, I'm going to tell you why. Listen, the national media, they're lying to you. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to see in this video may be shocking for some. This is a desperate man going through the five stages of grief. Throughout this video, you will notice massive amounts of hopium and copium. This is a man trying to craft a narrative that is very far from reality. You have been warned. And honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest, it's getting ridiculous. Let me just start by saying this, okay? I think Luka Doncic is playing. I think he's playing game one. That's just my, I don't have any inside knowledge. This is just my personal opinion. And it's, it's not just me, you know, injecting hopium or copium into my veins directly. No, no, no. I have actual evidence to back this up. Let's just start with this. Wednesday, three days after the calf strain in question, he's on the bike. Not in the boot. That's a good sign. According to Twitter doctors, right? Not according to me. I don't know fucking anything. But according to Twitter doctors, who presumably do know things, this is a good sign. Thursday. Thursday's practice. Four days after the calf strain, he's at the squat rack, presumably doing squats. I don't know what else he'd be doing there. He's on the treadmill. That's great news. According to MSNBC Sports, he's dunking after practice. I mean, Luca rarely ever dunks, except that one is a lie. I made that report up. Why would I make up a report? I just want to show you guys how easy it is to lie. I just want to show you guys, just, just as a frame of reference, just so you guys understand what's going on here. I had a friend text me today. He said, man, just heard on Colin Cowherd's show that Luca's probably not playing game one. Man, what the fuck does Colin Cowherd know about the Dallas Mavericks organization? What inside information does Colin Cowherd know? What inside information does Woj know? What inside information does Shams know at this point that the local reporters don't know? That's what I want. This is an organization that is infamously tight-lipped when it comes to leaking information, especially leaking information to the national media. Do you think two full days before game one, the Mavs would somehow let Shams know that Luka's not playing? I don't even think the Mavs know at this juncture. I just don't. There's no way of knowing. There's With a calf strain, there's no way you can know two full days before the game whether or not he's going to be playing. He could wake up on Friday morning and feel great. He could wake up on Saturday morning and feel like shit. Who knows at this point what's going on, okay? But I need what I need to have happen. I need Mavs fans to uh, get ready for the possibility that Luka misses at least one game, maybe even two. Because while I think Luka's going to play, while I do think he's going to play, I think the most likely outcome is he misses two games. That just is what it is. And that does suck. It does suck. You play 82 games... You watch 82 games, roller coaster of emotion all season long. You reach the final week of the season. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're feeling good. You're feeling great about the team. And in the third quarter, game 82 of what ended up being a meaningless game, Luca fucks his calf up. It sucks. It really sucks that potentially the entire season comes down to this moment. But you know what? I think I, I think the Mavs will be okay. I really, really do. Okay, do I think they can win a seven-game series without Luka? No, I, I, I don't. These aren't the Pistons. These aren't the Kings. These aren't the Rockets, right? The, the, I know the Jazz, the, there's a lot of turmoil going on. I think the Jazz are one brutal loss in the postseason away from Rudy Gobert coming out of the tunnel the next night with a black eye, okay? They're beating each other up in the locker room. That's just stuff that I'm hearing, right, just from inside sources, okay? I, I think that there's a chance that the, the, the Mavericks could take advantage of that. But in a seven-game series without Luka, it's going to be difficult. Two games without Luka, though. I think 100% Jalen Brunson and Dinwiddie are capable of stealing at least one game, which is all you, you're really asking of those guys. Uh, is talk. If you're not following this dude on Twitter, you absolutely need to. Uh, he's one of the best Mavs follows. You need to read all of his articles. He posted an article today sort of discussing what the Mavs need to do in the event that Luka Doncic misses time. And I myself wanted to do some research as well. I went back to that Christmas Day game against the Jazz, where the Mavs barely lost. No Luka in that game. Jalen Brunson had to carry the load offensively, and the Mavs played him close. I mean, they played him all the way to the end. And I was trying to f figure out what takeaways I, I could get from that game. And um, I stopped watching at halftime. Why? Because the 6'14 shooting guard was sitting at the fucking elbow the entire game doing nothing, and uh, Sterling Brown was pulling up from 30 feet five minutes into the game. And he was knocking him down. Sterling Brown was balling in that game. But uh, there was really no takeaways that I could get 
from that game. But but what I do think and what I did notice is that, listen, I have to be careful of my words here. I'm not saying Jalen Brunson is a better basketball player than Luka Doncic at all. Obviously, I'm not saying that. But he might be a little bit more well-equipped to exploit the Jazz weaknesses than Luka is. Why do I say that? Brunson is... Brunson is very explosive off the dribble. I feel like people don't give him enough credit. He is very quick off the dribble. He's very crafty, and he's great at getting to the rim. One of the best in the league at getting to the rim. And I think he can exploit the Jazz defense if he gets to go bear switch onto him. I think more than anybody in our team, Brunson is able to, ex to exploit that matchup and get to the rim. I think that Brunson can you know, uh, dribble, penetrate, and suck uh, uh, Rudy Gobert into the paint if needed and kick out to the shooters. Dinwiddie is capable of doing that as well. So I think you could get a game in the series without Luka where those two guys are getting to the rim at will, sucking Gobert in, and kicking out to shooters. What does that mean for the shooters? Well, after reading his talks article, he makes a good point that uh, Dwight Powell's effectiveness without without Luka is going to be limited, right? You want to you, you want the Jazz to respect Dwight Powell. So therefore, you need, you know, you need him in that lob threat. You need him in that short roll threat. You need him in the pick and rolls. You need Brunson, Dinwiddie throwing up lobs to Dwight Powell. And while Brunson and Dinwiddie are good and capable playmakers, they're just not Luka Doncic, right? Luka and Dwight Powell have this absurd connection where Luka always knows where he is, whether that's when he's getting trapped, trying to find him in a short roll, uh, pocket passes, or lobs. Luka just seems to always know where Dwight is. And, and Brunson and Dimley just don't have that connection. Hey, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Got to interrupt real quick. Just saying, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you need to do so. We stream every single postseason game, not just the Mavs games, all of them. Every game from every team. You do not want to miss it. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Hit the bell too so you know we're going live, okay? Make sure you like the video. It really helps me out, okay? We, we, am I getting pushed off the screen right now? That, that, hey, go Mavericks! So if Dwight Powell's effectiveness is limited even just a tiny bit, he, he might not get that much playing time in this series. So what does that mean? I need you guys to sit down for this. The X factor in this series might just be Maximilian Kleba. It really just might be, guys. I need you guys to prepare for the situation where Maxi Kleba is getting gigantic minutes and having to shoot gigantic shots. We've seen the blueprint for beating this, this Jazz team. It's laid out there. Spread the floor, have guys who can penetrate off the dribble, and kick out to the open shooters. Maxi Kleba is going to have to knock down shots if he's out there. He absolutely is going to have to. And if you get Maxi Kleba, who is confidently hitting shots, oh, the Mavs, I think the Mavs could actually win the series without Luka. But if Maxi's not doing that, it's going to be difficult. And then you might get who might be the next biggest X factor, Davis Bertans. That's right. We have reached a point where Maxi Kleba and Davis Bertans are going to be getting gigantic minutes and shooting gigantic shots in a postseason series for the Mavs. Has it always been like this? Last year it was Boban who ended up being this gigantic X factor against the Clippers. And now it's Maxi or Bertans. But you know what? Bertans has been shooting nearly 50% from deep over the last month or so of the season. So if he's knocking down shots, spreading the floor, keeping Gobert honest, and, and knocking down shots when Gobert helps off, if, if the Mavs are going super small, they could win. They could win in a series. Josh Green's going to have some big minutes too. But you need Brunson and Dinwiddie to step up. And I think they can. I think they're more than capable of beating their guy off the dribble. Uh, in some instances I, instances, I think they're more capable of doing that than Luka. That's just really not Luka's game, right? Brunson's really good at it. Luka's good at driving, don't get me wrong. But not, you know, in the explosive, I'm, I'm just beating, I'm just quicker. I'm, I'm taking that first step and beating my guy off the dribble and making, forcing Rudy Gobert to make a quick decision to help off of his guy. Uh, Brunson's more capable of, of doing that than Luka at times. I'm just, I'm just saying, calling it like it is, okay? So I think the Mavs could definitely win a couple of games without Luka. But uh, a full seven-game series, I, I just don't see it. I don't think he's going to be out that long. Um, and, and the more I talk about it, the more, unfortunately, I do think he's probably going to miss two games. I, I'm just trying to be as hopeful as I can, but they, the team needs to be careful. The team needs to be careful with, with their young superstar, the face of the franchise. You don't want to rush him back and have a worse injury happen. That would be a worst-case scenario. So uh, I know this is just a rambling video. I literally just saw the Shams tweet, and um, I'm just nervous, dude. <laughs> like A full 82 games, all boiling down to this. All boiling down to Luka Doncic's calf. 82 games, which could just be for nothing that quickly. That's just how, you know, that's the nature of the sport, man. Fucked up sometimes.